Hi, I'm Ilya Zaitsev. Endpoint security is all about protection and visibility. In this segment, we're going to focus specifically on protection, which really comes down to being able to detect malicious activity and or prevent it. Let's talk about some of the different ways that Falcon Host can give you this kind of protection. The Falcon platform can leverage a huge database of indicators of compromise to both detect as well as prevent malicious activity by looking for hashes, IP addresses, domain names, and other indicators. CrowdStrike's threat intelligence is also integrated into the platform, which allows us to detect as well as prevent targeted attacks coming from nation state, criminal, hacktivists, and activist groups, and even provide you attribution to them. Now, these approaches are great when you're dealing with known threats. But how does Falcon deal with unknown threats? Falcon can look for, as well as prevent, a variety of different exploits from succeeding, which stops the adversary from delivering their malicious code into your environment. In addition, by using indicators of attack, Falcon can behaviorally both detect, as well as prevent, even the most sophisticated malware-free intrusions. No other endpoint security platform offers such a comprehensive solution to protecting you against both known and unknown threats. Let's take a look at some of these in action. For this demonstration, I'll be using two virtual machines. The machine in the top left represents our adversary's perspective. We're going to attempt to spearfish our victim's machine here on the right-hand side with a malicious document in order to deliver a remote access tool. Our victim's system represented on the right-hand side with the sheep on the desktop is running a copy of our Falcon sensor that's connected to our cloud. I'll be logging into that here on the bottom in my web browser. Now, if I log into our prevention application, we can see here that initially all the various prevention features included with the Falcon Host product have been enabled, which includes automatic blocking of high confidence known malware, custom blocking, and IOA based prevention, which consists of exploit blocking and privilege escalation blocking. So let's kick things off as the victim here by opening up our inbox. We can see here that we've received an email with a malicious document attachment sent from our adversary. Embedded in that malicious document is the client for a popular remote access tool known as Dark Comet, which our adversary is attempting to deliver. If the exploit successfully executes, we should see a remote connection being established here in the adversary's command and control server. Okay, so we're opening up that malicious Word document. We're going to see Word attempt to load it, but as you can see here, it's actually crashed. Now this occurred because Falcon blocked the exploit contained in the document. To verify that that's occurred, let's go into our detections application and refresh it. You can see here we've just triggered a blocked exploit on our machine LAM. If we click on the detection, we can see some additional detail, including specifically what application was blocked, in this case Microsoft Word, and exactly what kind of exploit attempt was blocked, which in this case was an ASLR bypass. To make things interesting, I'm going to go back into our prevention console and disable exploit blocking. So if that's disabled, let's attempt to run this again. This time we can see that the exploit did in fact execute because we're presented with our adversary's lore document. However, we're still not seeing a remote connection here in our attacker's command and control system. Let's check back in our Falcon detection UI and see what's happened. A new detection has been triggered, this time for a malicious document along with a blocked hash. If we examine the process tree, we can see some additional details. Microsoft Word wrote an executable called service host to the machine and then attempted to execute it. We can see that this file was blocked because it surpassed a high confidence AV detection threshold. And we can verify that by examining the AV detections tab. Let's keep things going by going back to prevention and now disabling the automatic blocking of high confidence malware. One more time, we're going to attempt to launch the spear phishing document. And this time, we can see that it in fact succeeded. The malicious file has been executed on the system, and a remote connection has been established in our adversary command and control. We can see the activity associated with this in our detection UI by going back in and refreshing it. A new detection has now been triggered. We can see that the malicious document has again dropped service host, and this time service host has written an additional executable called MSDCSC. This is the dark comic client. We can see here that it's creating DNS lookups and network connections to our remote server. 
Now that the adversary has a backdoor in place, they can use it to upload additional tools to the victim's machine. The tool that was running was a variant of PWDump, a popular credential theft utility. Before it's executed, I'm going to enable a custom block to stop it. To do that, I'll create a text file containing the hash of our PWDump tool. Then I just need to drag and drop it into the UI. It'll scan automatically, and then I can save it into our user interface. Now I'll filter out my text file from the dropdown, select my hash, and assign an always block policy to it. Let's switch back to the adversary screen and open up a remote command prompt on our victim system. Now let's attempt to execute PWDump. However, we can see that the execution failed and we get an access denied error message thanks to the custom block we have in place. A quick visit back to the UI will verify this for us if we give it a refresh. And there we go, there's the custom block. Frustrated by this, the adversary is gonna try a different technique known as the sticky keys trick. To do this, our adversary will modify the registry and take any of the accessibility functions available in the Windows logon screen, such as the on-screen keyboard or the sticky keys utility and place it into a debugger mode. Now the adversary will open up a remote desktop connection to the victim system. Next, the ease of access menu is brought up and will attempt to open up the on-screen keyboard. However, we could see that nothing has actually occurred. No remote command prompt was brought up because it's been blocked behaviorally. Let's verify that by going into the UI and refreshing it. Here we can see a new activity has been detected for an attempted privilege escalation with command line creation prevented. To demonstrate what would normally occur, I'll go ahead and disable that prevention technique and attempt another remote connection. Once again, we'll attempt to bring up the on-screen keyboard. This time we do in fact get a command prompt that is NT system authority privileges. So what makes Falcon host prevention capabilities so unique? Well, there's no silver bullet when it comes to stopping these attacks, which is why our innovative architecture gives you multiple different capabilities you can use to stop known as well as unknown threats, whether they're targeted or commodity in nature. By stopping the breach from occurring in the first place, we can eliminate the entire response timeline, allowing you to keep your focus on your organization and operations. Thank you for joining me today. For more information, please visit us at CrowdStrike.com.